Got another A-level chemistry walkthrough for you. So this is number 17 in the enthalpy and entropy playlist. So the question deals with calorimetry results, Hess's law, and Gibbs equation associated to a graph. The question suitable for all of the major exam boards. And I really hope you like the question. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please think about doing that because it really helps me out. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. You can see I've drawn up a little diagram just to represent what happened in the uh, experiment. So they've taken heptane and they've burned 0.133 grams, heated up 150 grams of water, and the temperature change is 10.5 degrees C. But obviously it's got hotter. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the energy transferred to the water. So we do that using the Kugel's MC delta T equation. So mass 150 C, specific heat capacity of water 4.18 and 10.5 degrees for the delta T. So that's how many joules was put into the water and we need to turn that into kilojoules because the final answer is in kilojoules per mole. So next thing we're going to do is work out how many moles of heptane was actually burned. So that's mass over MR, 1.33 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. And all we need to do now is put the kilojoules over the moles. Which gives an enthalpy change of combustion of minus, it's exothermic remember, 4950 kilojoules per mole. So moving on to part B, I'm going to explain this one using the cycle, this Hess's Law cycle. So there's reaction one, there's its enthalpy change. And because we've got combustion data in the table, I've created a combustion cycle. So I've got the combustion products um, for C9H20, obviously 9CO2 and 10H2O. And if you combust a mole of pentane and two moles of ethene, you will also make 9CO2s and 10H2Os. So basic Hess's law, we've got two routes going from C9H20 to C5H12 and two C2H4s. We can go that way or we can go this way here. So that enthalpy change there is equal to that one minus this one because this arrow here is going in the wrong direction for this alternative route. So that equals that minus this one. So there's those values in there, and all I need to do now is solve for x. So sorting this square bracket out gives us this here. I'll just isolate x. So the enthalpy change of combustion in question comes out at minus 3535 kilojoules per mole. Moving on to part C, I've already put the answer in there. So the delta S, the entropy change for reaction to this one here is positive. And that's because you're going from one mole of gas to two moles of gas. So there's obviously more disorder on the product side with these two moles of gas compared to this one. So moving on to the last part, there's my line of best fit. I'm sure yours is very, very similar. I've cut the y-axis at 46 and I've cut the x-axis at 830. So if we've got to use this graph to calculate the entropy change, delta S, the minimum temperature, the reaction becomes feasible, and we've got to calculate the enthalpy change, the delta H. So I'm going to do all of this on the graph. So the thing you've got to appreciate with the Gibbs equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, is that it's actually in the form of a straight line equation, y equals mx plus c. I'll rearrange this just to show you what I mean. But basically, we've got delta G on the y-axis and we've got T temperature on the x-axis. So all I've done here is written the Gibbs equation again, but in a slightly different format so that it mirrors Y equals MX plus C. So obviously we've got Y there, delta G is Y, T is X. So the M term, remember that's the gradient, is going to be minus delta S and the y-intercept c is the delta h. So to get the gradient, it's the change in y, so y1 minus y2. So for me, that's going to come out at 106, and we're going to divide that by the change in x, so that's x1 minus x2, so I would get minus 830. 
So the gradient is that divided by that, which gives me a gradient of minus 0.128 kilojoules per mole. So remember that equals minus delta S. So delta S therefore will equal 0.128 kilojoules per mole. So obviously the minus signs have disappeared, have cancelled out. Moving on to the minimum temperature where the reaction becomes feasible. So if you remember, that's when delta G equals zero. So all we do is track along till we get to the graph and then drop down to the temperature axis, the X axis. So my answer would be minimum temperature of 360 Kelvin. And finally, the enthalpy change is the Y intercept. So I've already highlighted it there. So my answer would be plus 46 kilojoules per mole.